This episode brought to you by ExpressVPN, the best VPN there is. Take back your online privacy today. Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy. Remember it so you don't have to. And welcome to X Month! We don't have a doorbell, so I better check that out. Oh god, what are you doing here? And how'd you make that doorbell sound? It's one of his many gifts. So we trust you remember babysitting our teenage nephew today? We warned you about it five months ago. Yeah, but I moved studios hoping you wouldn't find me. We have eyes everywhere. The more I find out about you, the less I somehow know. We don't actually know when we're gonna be done, so best play it by ear. What, do you have some important stuff to do and you can't drag him along with you? No. And we just don't like spending time with him. Isn't that right, buddy? I don't care. Dude, you can't just leave him here indefinitely. <sighs> so, what do you like? I don't care. Is the following routine just gonna be you answering I don't care to every question? I don't, I don't care. care. Well, if I know modern parroting, just putting a screen in front of you is the best way to raise you. So two screens must be better. You just play on your phone while I watch the first X-Men movie. X-Men? You mean like the Marvel comics? Yeah. I love Marvel comics! Yeah? What do you think about the Marvel movies? They're amazing! They're like the comics come to life! Oh my god, well, you're gonna love this movie then! <laughs> yeah? When this film came out, every X-Men fan went nuts! So this is a really great and faithful Marvel adaptation. That's what everyone said at the time! And seeing how that was almost 20 years ago, and the landscape for comic book movies has barely changed at all, I think we're both in for a lot of surprises! <laughs> When X-Men came out, there was little faith in it. With the exception of Blade, comic book movies at the time were seen more and more as a big joke. Ever since Batman and Robin left a bad mark in everybody's rubber anuses, comic book flicks were shown very little dignity and even less ticket sales. So when the loud and bombastic yet still poignant and challenging X-Men comic was given the big screen treatment, it was not given much of a budget, or even much credibility. Even the trailer has sort of a B-movie sci-fi channel feel to it, it looked pretty corny. But thankfully, the movie didn't suck, which immediately meant it was amazing! Critics praised how they weren't laughing at a comic book film, which back then was pretty rare. And fans loved seeing a certain amount of dignity, oh hell, any amount of dignity, given to one of the greatest comic book series ever made. But it's not like Doctor Strange where they made the Ancient One into a Celtic woman, or like Iron Man 3 where they made the Mandarin not an alien. It's so annoying when they change stuff like that. Well, again, I haven't watched it in almost 20 years, but seeing how people look back on it so fondly, it has to be a great adaptation! Man, I'm excited! So am I. Let's go back to the year 2000 when people really knew how to do comic book movies. This is... X-Men. Ooh, the X shined! That means they're aware of the title! Mutation. The Final Frontier. We open on a brief narration and, wait, early 2000s movie, I'm guessing quick, fast, blurry shit? You know, this really was the cinematic equivalent of the upside down visor. Every time you see it, you're so glad it's dead. And thus we open this action-packed comic book superhero movie with... A concentration camp. Na 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 na. Yeah, it looks like they're going all the way with this, keeping the backstory of classic X-Men villain, Magneto, totally in check. With his parents being killed in the Holocaust, discovering his mutant powers of magnetism at a young age, and creating his hatred for humanity during one of the worst times in humanity's history. At a time when the most recent comic book movie was Mystery Men, this was a ballsy start! Wow, that really is faithful. Oh, you bet! Just look at the next scene that takes place in the not-too-distant future. Where we're introduced to Rogue, played by Anna Paquin. Only a few hundred miles to Anchorage. Rogue. Uh-huh. That's Rogue. Uh-huh. 
the 20 something super strong confident one liner spewing badass that sucks people's energy. Uh close, now she's a teenager who cries a lot, is super depressed, and can only suck people's energy. So not Rogue. Hey come on, I mean Rogue was a tortured character. Yeah, but she was still cool because she was confident. She had one of the cruelest powers. She could never touch anyone without sucking their life away. But she turned that angst into something kick-ass, not taking shit from anyone, socially or physically. You could look up to her because even though you knew she was suffering, she still chose to be positive and full of hope. That's what made her one of the coolest X-Men. Well, sure, if you want to be right, but this character has a lot to look up to. <laughs> like what? Her angsty face that looks like she's trying not to shit her pants. something I can be inspired by! See, she's inspiring me already. Okay, in all fairness, Rogue's not a bad character here. She still has depth and has acted very well, it's just... not Rogue. As the film continues, though, we get more faithful interpretations like Charles Xavier, played by Patrick Stewart, Jean Grey, played by Fam K. Jensen, and Senator Kelly, played by George Costanza's boss. Are mutants dangerous? I propose a poem about Susan's death. This senator thinks the evolution of humans, or mutants as they're called, are a growing threat because their heightened powers are becoming more frequent and powerful. A girl in Illinois who can walk through walls. Now what's to stop her from walking into a bank vault? Okay, can anyone really be taken seriously in front of that Willy Wonka golden ticket mural? She's looking like the virgin on a top. But Xavier sees Kaiser Sose, oh I mean Magneto, walking away. He's played by Ian McKellen. What are you doing here? Why do you ask questions to which you already know the answers? And which one of us is talking right now? I confuse us both a lot. You're sneaking around in here, Charles. Whatever are you looking for? Well, if you're looking for mental images in my head, take a gander at this! Ah, oh, There's plenty more gay Middle-earth porn where that came from! This baby's loaded with them! I'm goddamn Gandalf! Meanwhile, Rogue's powers drain the life out of her boyfriend. Or oh, he just found out he signed on to three Resident Evil movies. And she leaves her home in the south and runs away to northern Alberta? Christ, to hitchhike that far, you need the thumbs of Uma Thurman from Even Cowgirls Get the Blues. I thought you said you were going to take me as far as Laughlin City. This is Laughlin City. What was even her plan? Take the absolute zilch money she had and Jack Dawson the world on a drawing in a dream? If she could fly, that'd make more sense. Yeah, we know what you think. Well, maybe this cage fight bar can further her travels. Oh my years, I've never seen anything like that. He can sing, he can dance, he can host the Oscars, yet somehow he's still a credible badass. <laughs> this is for Kate Leopold. This is for Pan. This is for not getting Russell Crowe to drop out of Les Mis. If you're still disappointed they didn't do Rogue right, check out this introduction. Damn. Did I just turn gay? We all did a little bit. From frame one, Hugh Jackman got Wolverine down perfect. It's the same when Michael Keaton was Batman or Christopher Reeve was Superman. You didn't see an actor portrayal, you saw a childhood hero come to life. Sure, there's no mask or costume, but the overload of adrenaline and testosterone is so heavy, it just turned us into steaks. I'm a steak. And that's okay. Damn. He wins the fight as Rogue hangs around the bar, not exactly knowing what to do. I'll have the beer. Yeah, I hear I'm supposed to be teamed up with this Rogue bombshell who has the hots for me and can suck me dry. Oh god, you're not her, are you? Look out! Logan fights off Steve Wilco, but can't help but sense teen angst in the air. I'm sorry. I needed a ride. Thought you might help me. What the hell are you doing? I mean, you call that a southern accent? It's not nearly as consistent as my Canadian accent, eh? He does decide to give her a bit of a break though, and the two of them seem to form a bond. She even over time starts to see him as a protective role model. The first boy I ever kissed ended up in a coma. You can still feel him, and it's the same with you. Wait a minute. An insecure teen runaway that looks up to Wolverine? That's Jubilee! No, it's a... Uh... <clears throat> totally rogue! It's Jubilee, man! Now that's two characters I'm never gonna see done right. No, 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 that they have her in the movies, like, uh... There, and... There, and in the 80s somehow! 
Okay, look, clearly they want to do like what they did in the cartoon, with the young newcomer being introduced to the team, serving as the audience. But it's Wolverine who's focused on when the X-Men are introduced. Well, th that's not, well, yeah. But at the same time, she has a much more tragic power. She can't touch anything. What a great metaphor for teen angst. So change the power, not the character. They could have replaced her with Jubilee and made her powers blow up everything she touches, so she still couldn't make contact with anybody. In fact, Kitty Pride has a cameo in this, and she's a teenager that can disappear through walls. Not being seen is a far better metaphor for teen angst. You could have done either of those faithfully, and then save Rogue for another movie, where she can be older, badass, and fly. Uh, now, you listen here, young man. I will not have you badmouth what me and my college friends chose to ignore. Whatever. I'm going to go back to playing Tinder Fortnite. But, uh, wait, you're going to miss one of the greatest rivalries ever. You see, after a tree falls in front of him. <laughs> He suddenly smells spear gum in the air. Whoa, is that Sabretooth? Damn right that's Sabretooth! One of the greatest rivalries of all time is Wolverine and Sabretooth. It's been going on for years in the comics, cartoons, games. It's a classic feud. And now we're gonna see it explored here in the movie. Or he runs away like a bitch. Hey, give him time, give him time! They have a lot of other characters to establish! Establish and ruin? I don't like you. Well, after that quote-unquote battle, Wolverine has a much more terrifying nightmare to face. Waking up without his clothes and being back in school! While also being cast in Australia. Good morning, Logan. Bye, Professor. Bye, Kitty. I look forward to you being recasted twice. So Wolverine is introduced to Xavier and the X-Men who saved him. Cyclops, played by James Marston. And Storm, played by Halle Berry. <laughs> what is up with that wig? <laughs> it looks awful. <laughs> Doesn't look that bad. She looks like Gothica Queen of Dragons. Okay, look here. If you keep laughing like that, you're gonna miss the incredible romance that Rogue has. <laughs> oh, wait, she meets Gambit? Mm. I'm Bobby. Iceman is her love interest? Well, technically, it's Ice Boy. What the hell? They're one of the coolest couples in comic history, and you totally could have made Gambit a teenager. With how rebellious he is, that would have worked fine. I thought you were an X-Men fan. I am! Then how are you okay with this? Look, you weren't there, man. We grew up with Shaq and Steel. Steel! Steel! So Xavier shows Logan that he runs a school for young mutants, and admittedly it is a little weird that Rogue is just immediately tossed in a class. Oh, you're a runaway who just had your life threatened? Get to history class! Don't you even want to call my parents? History class! Welcome to Mutant High. Aw, it's a nice sculpture of dog shit. It looks even more realistic when it starts to melt. But the school is merely our public face. The lower levels, however, are an entirely different matter. I'm still not sure how I got government funding for a military aircraft. Most public schools can't even afford a racist. You know, I think it's the chair. I, I play the pity card pretty high. Meanwhile, looks like Senator Kelly is off to greet more fans, but his helicopter is hijacked by Magneto's goons. A mutant named Toe, played by Ray Park, and a shapeshifter named Mystique, played by Rebecca Romaine. I assume she's not Rogue's mother. Why do you ask questions you already know the answer to? Pilot! My greatest fantasy has terrifyingly come true! <laughs> they take him to Magneto's hideout at the former location of Fire Festival, where Magneto has plans for him. Are you a God-fearing man, Senator? That's such a strange phrase. I'm a Gods and Monsters fan myself. In one of the film's more brilliant additions, Magneto makes a machine that's sort of a gay convergence reversal where a person is transformed into a mutant. What do you intend to do to me? Let's just say God works too slowly. I'm going to pray your humanity away. The only downside? Christ, that is such a boring looking effect. If I was to tell you a giant beam encases you and transforms you into something else, you'd be excited to see that. This just looks like Gozer's fishing net. It's actually making me miss sky portals. Sky portals! Meanwhile, Wolverine and Jean get to know each other better. Where's your room? With Scott down the hall. Was that your gift? Putting up with that guy? I mean, he hasn't had a line yet, but the comic says we hate each other. I can move things with my mind. 
Really? What kinds of things? I also do amazing things with my thighs. But Logan dares her to read his mind. So read my mind. I'd rather not. She refuses, and then immediately does it. What, did he mentally convince her and we couldn't hear it? Read my mind. I'd rather not. Please, 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 please. <sighs> what do you see? Scott. Look, I thought of him naked once. Oh. You gonna tell me to stay away from your girl? Well, if I had to do that, she wouldn't be my girl. So I guess there is a little development of Cyclops and Wolverine's feud, but it once again kind of comes out of nowhere and isn't focused on much to feel genuine. In the cartoon, their personalities are so well defined, one always following the rules, the other breaking them. But here, we know so little of what Cyclops is like. We just know he wears Tom Cruise shades, so I guess that instantly makes us hate him. You know, it's weird that the best rivalry in this superhero movie is between the two old guys who rarely see each other. In the middle of the night, Wolverine has a flashback about where he came from. Rogue tries to wake him, but he's not a morning person. Somebody help! She absorbs his healing power, resulting in her body getting better, and I guess the holes in her PJs, too. She all right? She'll be all right. Yeah, you're under arrest for stabbing a student. Oh, wait, I forgot one Hogwarts rules. Anything flies in this damn school. Meanwhile, with Kelly's new mutant abilities, he photoshops himself free and swims to shore. And I gotta say, with all the cool powers you could have given him, British sunbathing is not one of the more impressive ones. Even Stan Lee here is like, but wait, when I envision X-Men as a movie, this is not the imagery that came to mind. Meanwhile, Mystique disguises herself as Bobby to tell Rogue to take her Fiona Apple wardrobe out of here. Where is she? Who? Rogue. She's gone. She's gone Rogue! I almost said it. Xavier uses a device called Cerebro to psychically locate her. Oh, I do hope this means more palettes of gray. It's not like the X-Men ever had much color in it. He locates her and Wolverine decides to steal Cyclops' bike to find her. Oh, that bike is amazing! Right? How many action scenes is it in? Well... That's what I thought. Hey, this is exciting! X-Bike! Hey, kid. Get to history class! What do you say? Give these geeks one more shot. Wolverine convinces Little Green Riding Hood to come home while Cyclops and Storm search for her in the train station. Come along, I told you. We don't talk to people with Viewmaster eyes. But things heat up when Magneto and Sabretooth attack. All right, so we're gonna finally see Wolverine and Sabretooth go at it. Um. <gasps> Sabretooth is going after Storm, and Magneto is going after Wolverine. It should be the other way around. Magneto and Storm should be tossing things at each other, and Wolverine and Sabretooth should be clawing each other's faces off. We're halfway through, and the greatest rivalry ever hasn't even been built up at all. Him and Mystique barely even talk. I can see why they're called mutants, because half of them are friggin' mute! You damn kids! With your Marvel movies refusing to fix what's not broken! In my day, Spawn took orders from a Muppet aardvark, and we liked it! Well, no, we hated it, but we liked hating it! Tell yourself whatever you want to, man. I'm going to watch the Avengers Endgame trailer again. You know Mistress Death isn't in there. Phony movie! Phony movie! <sighs> Hello? Where are you? Well, where are any of us, really? Look, you need to come here and collect your kid. He's an absolute menace! Really? What did he do? He's not liking the X-Men movie! Oh, no. Oh, yes! You come here and pick him up ASAP! Well, that's gonna be pretty tricky, Critic, because I fell asleep chasing a puppy who swallowed government secrets. You pick him up! Fine, God. Uh, just be there at five and I'll come get him. But the movie will be over by then. There's more important things than movies, Critic, like finding a cure for an STD that you yourself created. <sighs> Fine, just be here at five. Good. Oh, by the way, do you know of anyone who can cure an STD that you... Come, darling, there's so many more prostitutes to bring back to life! Shopping, I love shopping, I love shopping, I love shopping, I love shopping. What? 
I just bought 72 copies of the Smash It Drama Oranges Do Taxes, but I don't even like 72 copies of the Smash It Drama Oranges Do Taxes, unless <gasps> somebody hacked my credit card information while I was shopping online! <laughs> Wait a minute, that can't happen because I have ExpressVPN! <laughs> Without a VPN, your credit card information is wide open to hackers when you're doing online shopping. If a hacker discovers your information online, they can spend your money and access your shopping account, all because you didn't have ExpressVPN protection. That's because ExpressVPN encrypts your internet data, preventing others from sniffing your information over the network. So you can shop online with peace of mind thanks to ExpressVPN. They have the fastest speeds, consistently faster than other VPN providers. Server locations in 94 countries giving you plenty of options to choose from. Apps for every device including Windows, iOS, Android, Mac, Linux, router, and more. And it's easy to use, you just connect with one click. It's internet without restrictions, securely stream or download content from anywhere, anytime. It's also the market leading VPN, rated the number one VPN service by TechRadar. I use it because I shop online all the time like you probably do, and I want my information protected as much as possible, so that everything's... Oh, good. ExpressVPN is less than $7 a month with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So take back your internet privacy today and figure out how you can get three months free by clicking on the link in the description box. ExpressVPN.com slash NostalgiaCritic. Take back your internet privacy today with ExpressVPN, so everything can be... Oh good, oh good, oh good, oh good. Express VPN, the best VPN there is. Take back your online privacy today. Hey everybody, just letting you know we're gonna be at C2E2 in Chicago. That's me, Brad Jones, Rob, Malcolm, Tamara, and a whole bunch of the Channel Awesome gang are gonna be there. We also have a panel, Movies Everybody Disagrees With You On, where you get to talk about the movie that everybody, well, disagrees with you on. It's your panel, it's a lot of fun. We've gotten a booth at this con a ton of times, it's a lot of fun, and we'll see you there. So Magneto rips the train apart as Wolverine tries to stop him. You must be Wolverine. I'm a giant soup can. What the hell do you want with me? Whoever said I wanted you? You're not my type. I prefer redheads. Blue redheads. It looks like he's after Rogue instead of Wolverine, and he knocks her out cold. Young people. Always trying to run away from needles being thrown at them. What a weird line. The cops tried to stop them, but... That's just awesome. He points their own guns at them, but Xavier controls the minds of Sabretooth and Toad to stop him. What do you wonder for? Can't you read my mind? You forgot my shielded magic helmet. You'll have to kill me, Charles. I don't think I can stop them all. Uh, hey, I have a better idea. <clears throat> Why don't you use Sabretooth you're controlling at the moment to take off his helmet so you can read slash control his mind? But the friggin' professor can't figure that one out as he just lets Magneto go. I thought you lived at a school. Just be sure you bring her back in time for history class! Just as the X-Men are about to go looking for him, they get an unexpected visitor. Can I interest you in Bigot Scout cookies? Well, 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 I'm not saying I'm enjoying this. I'm relishing it. So Xavier reads his mind to reveal... what we already know, so it's pointless to show again. As Storm tries to comfort Senator Jelly Donut. I'm here. Don't want to be alone. Alright. You know, even Storm kinda sucks. Yeah, even back then I thought that. I mean, Holly Berry can turn in some great performances, but she's not really an image of commanding strength. You look at Storm and you see a goddess of lightning, a presence that demands authority. This Storm acts like a nervous high school counselor on her first day. Do you hate normal people? I suppose... I'm afraid of them. Can you imagine if one of the guards from Black Panther played that role? That would be awesome. But then we 
one half Halle Berry's amazing African accent. Logan, you can't do this alone. Hang on to something. Help us. Fight with us. Where are you going? Has brown hair? Am I allowed to say that sucks? You are. It sucks. Hard. So the senator turns into a melting sperm as his body rejects the mutation. Xavier tries to use Cerebro to find Rogue, but it looks like Mystique infected the machine. Using, oh no, green goo! That's always bad in movies! Xavier is knocked out, and after, let's see, two sentences of Cyclops talking to Xavier in the entire movie, we suddenly get a monologue about how close they are. You can still hear me, can't you? You've taught me everything in my life that is ever worth knowing. That if anything happens, I'll take care of them. Aw, they cut away before he sang to him. I've been dreaming of a true love's kiss. But Jean uses Cerebro to locate them as Magneto readies his... Oh god, G.I. Joe bomb! Batteries aren't included! Magnificent, isn't she? Are you going to kill me? Yes. Wow. He just said it. You don't see that happen in movies. His bedside manner is on par with Arnold from True Lies. Are you going to kill me? Yep. Magneto is here, Liberty Island. His objective is to mutate the world leaders at the UN summit on Ellis Island. You know, for the not-too-distant future, maps are becoming very impractically stupid. Wait, I'm gonna put my face on it. You see? You see? You see the funny face it made? You see? Maps! What about Harbor Patrol? Radar. If they have anything they can pick up our jet, they deserve to catch us. Or you could let them know there's a mutant terrorist at the Statue of Liberty. Yeah, why are they doing this alone? I mean, I know there's prejudice, but if you just say a mutant is about to wipe out the world's leaders, I think some military would get there pretty quick. Maybe then you can fight him with a ton of backup and not leave an entire school unmanaged without an adult. Oh, it's okay. Every kid's just a nuclear time bomb, not always aware how not to explode. You actually go outside in these things? What would you prefer? Yellow spandex? Next, you'll be telling me in another Marvel film, a raccoon will be firing a machine gun. Oh! Yellow spandex. Gotta love the sick architect who designed this. The giant jet comes out of the friggin' basketball court. They don't give a shit about the children's safety. Imagine some kids just want to play midnight basketball. Oh, I'm gonna whoop your ass good, Billy. No, nah, you're the one that's going down, Billy. Ah! Hey, you're finding more things wrong with the movie, huh? When I see what kids grew up with with comic book movies today and how much more faithful they are, I feel a little jealous about what we got. I mean, yellow spandex, no, that wouldn't work in this more realistic world you created. But then neither do all these plot holes that were originally designed for a bombastic comic universe instead of a down-to-earth one. Yellow spandex would work in Watchmen, in Avengers, and eventually even in later X-Men movies. I'm realizing more and more what they chose to take out and leave in doesn't always match the style and tone they created for this universe. Well, I'm sure that's what they could do at the time. But why didn't they just go all out? Why didn't they make a comic book movie? We all know we're gonna see a comic book movie, so why didn't they make a comic book movie? We knew what we were in for! It, it looks like some good action's coming up. Eh, who cares? No, 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 look, look, let's see. So Magneto gets ready to transfer his power to Rogue so she can use the device to transform everybody into a mutant, draining all the life out of her. Once I give my power to the girl, I'll be temporarily weakened. Aren't all men. That's why we leave immediately afterwards. The Blackbird lands, I guess not so elegantly. Sorry? You call that a landing? Call that a punchline? Thankfully, Mystique went to mime school as she stands ridiculously still as they walk past her, and then she takes on Logan's form to attack. <laughs> they just recreate what Hugh Jackman does in the mirror every morning. <laughs> so this fight scene is a little odd. On the one hand, the battle between Mystique and Logan is actually pretty cool and creative, though I didn't know spider manning up the walls was one of her powers. However, the X-Men battling Toad seems a little weak because, well, it's the X-Men battling Toad. Who gives a shit? How could they not take this guy out in a millisecond? Look at this. Storm can control the weather. The friggin' weather, master of the elements. What does she do? I'm gonna go for a stroll. I'll take my time to admire the architecture and, oh no, face my hand, politely gesturing you to stop. <laughs> Gestured. They're so pathetic, he even has time to do a little dance. What the hell even was that? I love to sing -a about the moon and the June and the spring. -a. Of course, 
the natural energy of an elevator shaft obviously brings her powers to life! Do you know what happens to a toad when it's struck by lightning? The same thing that happens to everything else. Oh my god, I'm dying on that! I said lines by George Lucas that have more charm! Lucas! Come on, we have to regroup. The other one ain't far away. Well, gee, seeing how these two characters haven't been together for a while, I wonder if one of them... You're not part of the group. At least I really hope so. Okay, we're good. They make it to the statue, but Magneto uses his powers to make them act backwards and captures them. Wolverine uses his claws to break free, though, and we have the, uh... <clears throat> most epically built-up fight ever. You know, it's not even like you even needed that much between them. Just an occasional line here or there, an angry glare. You know, like in Waterworld or Die Hard or Total Recall. Just a little interaction to build up the hatred between them. And we get none of that. One of the coolest comic book rivalries ever reduced down to just two guys hitting each other. Big friggin' whoop. Oh, come on, the fight's not that bad. Eh, even that's kind of lame. It's a battle on top of the Statue of Friggin' Liberty, yet it looks like a stage set from the movie Chicago. I mean, look at this dated ass effect. Why, wherever did the switch from CGI to live action happen? I simply cannot tell! Hitchcock did a fight on the Statue of Liberty decades earlier, and not only did it feel more grand in scale, but somehow it felt like it had more color than the actual color movie did! But look, he says Bob, just like in the comics. Hey, Bob, I'm not finished with you yet. Yeah, I guess that's cool. But why does it look like the Statue of Liberty has a Wolverine earring? And look, after Storm Warp whistles him to the top, we still have to see that radioactive egg drop soup effect almost consume the city. But it ends on a nice note, look! A figurative and literal touching scene where Logan gives his power to save Rogue. Come on, kid. You don't want to miss history class. But look, it's nice. It almost kills him, so he was willing to sacrifice himself for her. I guess. Actually, Jesus, this poor guy spends half the movie friggin' passed out. Narcoleptics have their eyes open more than him. So Magneto is arrested, and Mystique somehow survives three knives to the chest. Yeah, nobody dies in these movies, and somehow everybody dies in these movies. And she takes over the identity of Senator Kelly. Mystique. Son of a bitch. Okay, if that eye thing was on screen for a frame and they paused it at just the right moment, I could see maybe people not catching on to it. But look how long it goes after. From many parents' rights groups... How did everybody miss that?! Oh, uh, Senator, there's concerns you're turning into Jar Jar Binks. That's absurd. Oh, I mean, uh... At least Miss another mutant, ha ha ha! Actually, Binks is worse. Okay, got it. Everyone manages to heal up, and Xavier gives Logan the location of where he might find some answers about his past. So he's off, but not before saying goodbye to Rogue. I kinda like it. It reminds me of how I almost died. I don't want you to go. I'll be back for this. No, I gotta take a leak, and I hate wearing it in the bathroom. Just hold on to it before I leave you forever. Finally, we see the only real rivals in this movie sequel bait the hell out of this series. Doesn't it ever wake you in the middle of the night? The feeling that someday they will pass that foolish law and come for you. Well, it's American politics and nothing ever gets accomplished, so probably not. The war is still coming, Charles, and I intend to fight it. And I will always be there, old friend. Unless I die a couple times and or wipe out all mutants off the face of the earth. But you know, these movies are pretty consistent. I can't see that happening. They exit via giant condom and I guess the most authentic X-Men movie has finally wrapped up. <sighs> wow. You know, you were totally right. When you compare it to comic book movies today, this isn't nearly as impressive as I remember it. Well, it's okay. Yeah? How? As an adaptation, it doesn't have the color, imagination, or depth of characters. As a standalone movie, it's kind of bland with a ton of plot holes. Apparently there was 15 minutes cut from it, and it really shows. It just kind of feels like we go from scene to scene with no big emotional impact ever being made. Well, okay, I guess that's all true, but look at it this way. When it came out, nobody took comic book movies seriously, mostly because they followed the source material even less than this film did. 
So attempting to be taken seriously, talking about prejudice, while also trying to be somewhat faithful to a source nobody took seriously was kind of risky. It had to take baby steps, find a middle ground so that future comic book movies could take more chances and risk higher budgets. Sure, the movie's just okay, but being okay back then is what led other comic book movies to being great today. Even if it didn't leave as great a story as you remember, it still left a great impact for comic book movies to follow. Huh. I guess that is a good point. You know, we actually learned a lot with the different comic book movies we grew up with. Yeah, I guess we did. I'll be your aunt and uncle. You know, this was actually a much better experience than I thought it was going to be. I paid the food that kidnapped my son! Dad! Your dad, Mr. T? There he is. There's the guy that kidnapped your son. It certainly wasn't us, because we're saying it certainly wasn't us. That is a foolproof argument. Come here, sucker. I'm gonna kick your ass. Eat my cereal. I pay the food that don't eat school. He's a nostalgia critic, and he remembers it, but probably not for long. Yeah, this is your ass, and this is your ass on Mr. T. Any questions? Ooh, here's the answer. Get to history class. Walker here, I'm recording this on my phone today because the camera's back at the studio, someone else was using it, but I still want to do the uh, charity shout out. And uh, if you haven't heard, a whole bunch of tornadoes have gone through uh, Alabama, and I think something like 23 people were killed, and lots of people are left without homes, and uh, this is a really terrible tragedy. So today we're going to do the uh, Red Cross for East Alabama. Uh, it shows uh, how you can donate, it shows how you can volunteer. Uh, it's a really, really wonderful site, and uh, I mean, Red Cross is great, they, they always do wonderful work, but uh, yeah, definitely so many people have lost so much, so definitely go donate, check them out, maybe even volunteer, because uh, there's a lot of people that need help. Thank you so much.